Hi, this is Paolo from the NBA Academy, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make bases like the ones in the track Escape by Netsky. So, this is the original track. And this is my recreation of the bass. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss out for future videos. Also, I want to let you know that we're currently running a holiday sale across the whole DMB Academy catalog. That means that you can access the absolute best drum based education resources from artists like Icicle, Current Value, Matso, Dizzy Breaks, Cove, Counter Strike, and many, many more for up to 70% off. So if you ever wanted to learn drum and bass with the pros, this is a great chance for you to do it. Just visit dmbacademy.com. So now let's get into the video. Okay, so before we get started, this already knows that we're gonna be playing. Make sure you copy them if you want to follow along with the video. So now let's get into Serum. So here in Serum, what we're going to do is we're going to follow a very simple workflow that works based on sine waves like usual. If you are a fan of this channel, you will recognize that we use sine waves a lot here. And so if we load two uh, basic shape wave tables into both oscillators um, and we play the bass, this is what you should get. Cool. So the technique is very simple. We're going to use oscillator A as our main uh, sub oscillator, meaning it's going to be the most stable harmonic in this sound. For example, if I were to open a spectrum analyzer, for example, if we play this, we can see how indeed it is the most stable waveform. And what we're gonna do is we're going to turn on oscillator B and we're going to turn on oscillator B. We're going to change its harmonics. We're going to add a couple high harmonics. Let's flip the polarity of the waveform on oscillator A by bringing the face all the way down. So we have them go both going up and then down at the same uh, type of rate. And then we're going to use this oscillator as the source for harmonics of the bass. So the Netsky reference has this combination of harmonics. It has a little bit of this third harmonic, which if you pay attention to the analyzer, um, it's F sharp, which will be uh, seven semitones above the note that we're playing, which I don't think it's B. The analyzer shows is B. Actually, yeah, it is B. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we get a harmonic playing here. So going back into our regular workflow, the Netsky bass uses that fifth. It stacks an octave of that B, and then it, it, it adds another fifth, which will be six. So harmonic number six is going to be the same as harmonic number three, if you think about it, it's just double. And yeah, indeed, it's going to be one octave of it. Going back into what I said at the beginning of the video, let's just add some attack and some release so we don't get a lot of clicking. Um, that click uh, happens because of Ableton's um, playback getting stopped, but if you were to just press notes, you wouldn't get that, that click. Okay, anyway, as I said before, when we hold one note, we can see how the initial or the fundamental harmonic, that be, it's not moving, it's just stable. We want this harmonics right here to move. So we can automate their movements like this, but as you can see, it feels a little bit robotic. It feels a little bit forced, and it's not the most efficient way of making them move. But what is gonna take this bass to the next level is using the unison function, which is going to add multiple voices to this oscillator. And now you can see how they move in a more, um, I would say organic way. And so from here, you, you just need to experiment on how do you want to, that movement to be. If you want it to be very smart, you can use a lot of detune. If you want it to be very fast, you can use a lot of detune. Or if you want it to be a little bit slower, you can um, have less detune. Somewhere in the middle, it's kind of cool. And you can bend depending, uh, sorry. And you can blend depending on how you want this movement um, to be in regards to the original tuned uh, voice 
which really it's uh, the most impactful parameter is this D2 and 1. So now that we have this movement, we just play the bass line. And we have like 80% of the sound. The rest will be just to have some form of glide between notes. For example, if we were to activate the mono legato and hit this always option, so the sound, it's always gliding. Doesn't matter how long do we press uh, a note or if we have notes overlapping. If we don't, if we have it off, this will not happen always. We will have to have two notes being pressed. But if it's always, it's always gonna glide between notes. So in this case, I'm just gonna use always. And that's pretty much the bass. So as you can see, having this type of workflow based on sine waves, which ultimately it's a lot of additive synthesis, can be so efficient that we don't use a single effect and our sound is fully mono compatible. It doesn't have a lot of, let's say, mixing issues. And even you, you can even control the width of the voices. If you want it to be fully mono or um, stereo. In this case, I'm gonna leave it stereo because uh, those voices are really not in the sub range, so they will not conflict with something like a kick or a sub, which in this case is also leader A. Cool. So that is basically the bass in the style of, of Netsky and in the track Scape. Uh, if you just follow the same notes, you will get the same bass. So if we were to play this over the track, that's what you get. Cool. So now the question is how can you make your own sound because you don't want to copy the artist you don't want to sound exactly like Ned's kind of trackscape <laughs> so the solution is to really try to understand these concepts and try to give them a creative twist so for example uh in this case it's going to be very similar because the baseline is going to change uh but for example the first change that i would make is to have a different midi of course so for example, I am not gonna use this transitional notes uh, and I'm gonna use a different octave here. So I'm gonna go from B to E to G to A. Why not? So now the bass line is this. And then I can go to one more. Cool. And then now I can go here into Serum. If you want, you can keep the analyzer so you have more clarity in your workflow. And then I can stack different combinations of harmonics. For example, instead of using fifths, I can use this harmonic number five, which is a very, very um, weird harmonic. Like it's not weird, it's, I think it's a major third. Um, but it's a very, very fun harmonic to play with. Uh, I will stack that with uh, the fifth and then an octave. And now we have this bass, right? So we play it on Ned Sky's tune. That's what we get. So really using this workflow to design your own bass, to be creative with these harmonics, to be creative with your bass lines um, in terms of like the MIDI notes that you create, it's what it's going to differentiate you from other tracks. So that's how you create the sound in the style of Netsky, but then this is how you make it your own. And you can even add your own creative movements. You can add a specific uh, rhythms. So let's say, I don't know, let's say we use, we, we end up using that harmonic right there, uh, which is number four. As you can see, get creative with all the combinations of the movements that now you can make um, because you understand the principle that created that original sound. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the sound also for this video. I know that liquid basses um, or this type of workflow is something that I have deeply explored in this channel, but this time I wanted to expand a little bit on this workflow to really teach you how you should start thinking about making this type of sounds something more uh, of your own 
instead of just recreating something that is already done. I highly encourage you to explore the combination of harmonics, the different movements, and the different bass lines that you can uh, create, all the different bendings and movements. So you can be the one that creates something new and unique rather than something that already exists. And that is the point of these tutorials. But um, as you know, like we always give you a reference, but as usual, you have to learn the rules like a pro first. So then later you can break them like an artist. So yeah, that is going to be it for the sound and also for this video. If you would like to support the channel, which will be uh, great because we can make many more videos like this. I highly suggest you to go to dmbacademy.com and grabbing one of our products. We have insane preset bundles. We have the best preset packs ever. We have preset packs with insane producers like Current Value, Counter-Strike, Molecular. We have producer bundles with Icicle, Matzo, Guest, Bass Brothers, Abyss, and many more coming. So if you want the best resources for learning trauma-based production, don't think about it twice. dmbacademy.com is going to be the best option for you. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.